Hello everyone, before anything else, I would like to wish you a good luck on your first long quiz. Okay, so our next topic is all about the different breeds of livestock and poultry species. Okay, the objective of this module is to identify the different breeds of poultry and livestock in order to improve their health adaptability and production. Okay? So what is breed? Breed pertains to a group of animals with common origin and common characteristic that distinguish them from the other group of animals within, within the same species. Okay, so let us start with the different breeds of chicken. The first one is the Ancona. The Ancona have a distinct plumage or distinct um, feather with black coloring and white tip feathers. The ear lobes are white, which has no connection with the egg color. The egg color of this animal of this breed is white, and the comb can either be single or rose comb. Okay. Next is the Australorp. These have a intense beetle green sheen on the black birds and dark eyes. Okay, so kung mapapansin nyo, medyo greenish siya, parang yung sa lagubang. Okay? Kaya, kaya tinatawag na beetle green sheen. Okay? Australorps have, are a good egg producers and hold the world's record for egg production with one hen having laid 364 eggs in one year. Okay, so almost one year, I one egg a day. Okay, next is the Brahma, or also known as the king of all poultry because of their great size, strength, and vigor. They have a pea comb. Kaya siya tinatawag na pea comb eh, kasi very small, parang pea. Okay, with uh, red wattles and earlobes together with profuse feathering and well feathered shank. So, hanggang dun sa legs niya, meron siyang feathers. Okay. Brahma are heavy birds and generally used for meat production. Next are Cochin are floppy fowl with thick feathers. This makes the fowl well protected in winter condition. These are dual purpose fowl but primarily bred for exhibition. Exhibition meaning um, birds are raised and kept for show purposes. Next are Cornish or also known as the Indian game because they show the obvious influence of Malay and other or oriental um, blood. Because of their short feathers, Cornish need adequate protection during very cold winter and as their feathers offer less insulation that than can be found on the most other chicken. Their skin and shank color is yellow. The next one is leghorn. So, merong dalawa. Black leghorn and the white leghorn. Okay. Leghorns are good foragers and can often glean much on their diet from ranging over fields and barnyard. Leghorns are capable of considerable flight and often roast in trees if given opportunities. Leghorns has red wattles, white earlobes, and either single or rose comb. Primarily, a layer chicken around 200 plus eggs per year, so they have white egg. Next is Minorca. It is considered as the largest of the Mediterranean breed. Okay. They have long tails, large white feathers, and closely held to narrow bodies. Minorcas have relatively large combs and wattle, which in cold weather are prone to frostbite. They are rather poor meat fowl because of their narrow angular bodies and slow growth. Next is the Rhode Island Red. It has a two varieties. The rose comb varieties tend to be smaller, but should be the same size as the single comb varieties. The red color fades after long exposure to sun. They have also a yellow shank. This uh, Rhode Island Red is egg producer and probably the best egg layer of the dual purpose breed. Next is Sussex. They are alert, attractive, and good foragers. The Sussex has close fitted feathers, single red comb, red wattles, and also earlobes. 
the shanks are considered white. They are dual purpose, um, dual purpose fowl. Their egg, egg color is light brown. Next is Yandot. They are good medium weight, weight fowl for a small family of flocks kept under rugged condition. They are also a dual purpose breed. Next is uh, the different breeds of swine. The first one is the Berkshire, which originated in England. They have a black colored skin with white markings on legs, face, and the tip of their tail. Okay. The excellent carcass quality of Berkshire hog made him an early favorite with the upper class of English farmers. Next is Duroc, which originated in the U.S. or is also known as the Red Power because of its carcass quality. It is also the reason why Durocs are mainly used as sire for slaughter pigs. So they are ma mainly used for um, slaughter pigs. Ginagamit silang tatay na mga gagamitin for slaughter or pangkatay na baboy. Durocs have different variation in color and may, ra may range from very light golden and very dark red. Next is Hampshire. These are breed of hogs, maybe well one of the oldest original early American breeds of hogs in existence today. Okay. They are also known as the belt because they are usually black with white belt. So para siya may belt sa body. Next island race from Denmark is the longest breed of swine. They are white in color with large droopy ear. Okay, kung mapapansin ninyo, yung tenga niya ay droopy, ibig sabihin nakabagsa. They are known for their prolificacy and good mothering ability. Kapag kasi sinabi natin good mothering ability, ibig sabihin it is the availability of sow to take care of her piglets. Next is large white. Kung mapapansin ninyo, itong land race and large white, halos magkamuka. However, land race is longer, mas mahaba siya, and yung ear niya ay droopy. Kapag ka large white naman, yung ear niya ay erect. Tayo. Large white are from England and are distinguished by their attractive bearing, erect ears, white color, and long deep sides. They have been valued for their, for their bacon production since the inception of the breed. As their name suggests, they are characterized by large size. Next is Pitrains. Pitrains are from Belgium. They are white-colored pigs with black spots. They are known as the muscle pigs. While the sow of the breed, the sow of the breed are pro prolific, they lack in some mothering characteristic and in milk production. Okay. Tamworth. Tamworth is an English breed of hog originated in Ireland that was distinctly bacon type. Tamworths are known for their hardiness. Kapag sinabi natin hardiness, nakakapag-adjust or nakakapag-adapt sila sa adverse climates. For the breeds of cattle, the first one is Angus from Scotland. They are black in color and usually pulled. They are intended for beef production. So kung mapapansin ninyo, yung body niya ay well pronounced ang muscle. That's why it is for beef production. Okay. Next is the Brahman. They are characterized by a hump. So makikita nyo, meron siyang hump above the shoulders and pronounced julap. What is julap? Ang julap ay itong skin na yan. Loose skin sa kanyang bandang leg. Okay. Next are Hereford, which originated in England. They are muscular with moderate long in length of the side. They are red in color with white face and flank. They are mainly raised for beef production. Next is Holstein Frisian from Netherlands. They are the largest and most popular, popular daily cattle, cattle breed. Okay. Its coat color is black and white. And they are usually pulled at, because they are the largest. Dahil sila nga ang pinakamalaking dairy cattle breed, 
sila rin ang pinakamataas ang milk production na umaabot ng 28 kilograms per day. Next is the jersey from the island of Jersey. Okay? Ito namang jersey, kabaliktaran ng Holstein Frisian, ang jersey naman ay known as the smallest dairy cattle breed that produces least amount of milk. Okay? So, kung itong Holstein Frisian, siya ang largest at siya rin ang pinakamataas ang milk production. Ito namang jersey, siya ang smallest dairy cattle breed at pinakamababa ng daily milk production. However, siya naman ang may pinakamataas na milk fat content. Okay? Next is the Sahiwal. Sahiwal is one of the tropical breeds of dairy cattle from Pakistan. It has a reddish, reddish brown skin with or without markings. The body is heavy and symmetrical with loose skin with the average daily milk yield of 8 kilograms. Okay, so for the beef cattle and daily cattle. Okay, so kung mapapansin nyo, ano ang pinagkaiba nila? Ang pinagkaiba nila ay yung kanilang angularity. Angularity is defined as the angle and spring of the ribs. Kung mapapansin ninyo, itong beef cattle, itong nandito sa left, mamasal siya. While itong dairy cattle naman, nakikita mo yung ribs niya. May very angular siya. Okay, why? Because ang dairy animal, kapag ka nagpo-produce siya ng milk at siya ay um, pumapayat, ibig sabihin, siya ay productive dairy animal. Pero kapag ka nagpo-produce siya ng milk at siya ay tumataba, ibig sabihin, unproductive siya. Why? Because kapag ka nagbibigay siya ng gatas at tumataba siya, ibig sabihin, yung kinakain niya, imbis na ibigay niya para sa milk production, binibigay niya yun para ma-maintain yung kanyang katawan. Pero kapag pumapayat siya, ibig sabihin, um, siya ay productive dairy cattle because yung kinakain niya, pinupunta niya lahat sa kanyang milk production at halos wala nang napupunta para ma-maintain niya yung kanyang body. Okay? So, for the breeds of buffalo, the first one is the Philippine Carabao, of course, from the Philippines. They are black to light gray in color. Okay? With, uh, with brown hairs. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga balahibo niya ay brown. Brownish siya. Yun ang distinct characteristic ng ating Philippine Carabao. Meron din siyang tinatawag na chevron. Okay? So, ang chevron ay yung stripe niya ito. Meron sa sa kanyang neck and malapit sa dula. Ayan. Okay? Another distinct characteristic is the color is lighter on the legs. So, kung papansin din nyo dito sa picture, meron siyang white na markings dito sa legs. And meron siyang julap. Okay? Next is the Thai buffalo from Thailand. It has a black color skin, colored skin with long hair compared to the other breeds. They have a medium and strong horn with moon-like crescent that ends upward. Pataas yung kanyang horn. Mahaba and pataas. Next is the Mura buffalo. Mura buffalo originated in India and they are jet black in color. Kung mapapansin nyo yung kulay niya, itim na itim siya. The skin texture is fine and soft. And the horns are short and light, tightly curled, similar to ram horns. The average daily milk yield is 5 to 7 kilograms. Mura buffalo usually yung breed na kinocross nila sa ating Philippine Carabao para magamit nila for milk production. Yun din usually yung ginagamit nila dito sa Philippine Carabao Center. Okay. Next is Nili Rabi from Pakistan. The color is usually black with white markings on the forehead, muzzle, legs, and face. Okay? So, ang distinct characteristic niya ay meron siyang white markings sa buntot, meron siyang white markings sa kanyang forehead, at meron siyang switch and small eyes. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung mata niya may puti na para siyang may katarata. Pero normal yun sa kanya. Okay? Next is the Surti from India. It has a brown or black skin and the hair is gray to rusty brown. 
Japarabadi from India also. It is black with occasional white markings on face and legs. The body is long and heavy with large and broad flat horns that tend to drop on each side of the neck. For the breeds of goat, the first one is the Anglo-Nubian from Britain. They have a short hair with combination of various colors like black, brown, white, cream, or gray. They are characterized by having um, large pendulous ears, so yung ears niya large and pabagsak and having convex Roman nose. Kung papansin nyo, yung ilong niya sobrang tangos. Hindi na siya straight, pa convex na siya, pa ganito siya, may pa curve siya. Next is Boer, is a breed of goat that was developed in South Africa in the early 1900s. It is a popular breed for meat production. The coat color is usually white with brown head and has a large droopy ears. Next is the French Alpine, is the first breed of dairy goats. They have a cone-shaped perky ears and alert appearance. Bakit, siya, bakit kaya sinabing alert appearance? Kasi yung ear niya nakatayo na nakapatuso. Para siyang laging naka-alert. Okay. Having an average daily milk yield of 7 to 8 kilograms per day. Next is the Kiko. Kiko is a breed of meat goat originated from New Zealand. Kiko comes from the Maori language meaning meat. Kaya nga siya ay for meat production. Next is La Mancha is from USA. They have a various colors but the distinguishing characteristic of this breed is that um, they have a very small ear also known as the gopher ear or the elf ear. Kung mapapansin nyo, walang loose na ear na nakalabas yung skin. Parang butas lang siya na sobrang liit na, na ear. Okay? Kaya nga tinawag na gopher ear or elf ear. Next is the Philippine native goat is a small stocky animal with mature weight ranging from 15 to 30 kilograms. It is red, white, or black with a combination of these colors. So mix yung color niya. And they are primarily raised for meat production and sell them on milk. They are mostly meat type. Next is the Toggenberg from Switzerland. Their, their colors vary from light fawn to dark chocolate. Next is the Saanen, or also known as the queen of dairy goats. They are usually white in color and they are pulled. Okay. So next is the for the breed of sheep. The first one is the Barbados black belly. These sheep resemble a small, a small deer or antelope at a distance. They are very active and lively. They are alert at all times compared to more recognized mutant type. Barbados black belly sheep are slower growing. Next, I Cheviot is a long wool breed of, from England and Scotland. They are hornless and of reasonable frame. Cheviot wool is often blended into other yarns to give flexibility and durability. Next is the Corridale that is developed in New Zealand and Australia. It is a dual purpose sheep. It is large frame and pulled with good carcass quality. Although its role has traditionally been to produce premium lambs, lambs when mated to shire, sires of meat breeds, the Corridale is now achieving comparative performance rates on purebred lambs. Okay. This is a bonus together with the high skin value secures as a future popular breed. So, ang Corridale ay dual purpose for meat type and of course for its wool. Next is the Dorfer from South Africa is hardy. Ibig sabihin again, nakakapag-adapt siya sa climate and can thrive under rage condition where other breeds can barely exist. Next is the Dorset. So, merong Dorset na pole and merong horn. Okay, so dito sa picture nito makikita nyo siya ay horn. It is also a dual, dual purpose for wool and for meat. 
Next is uh, St. Croix has been uh, shaped by natural as well as human selection. As a result, they are climate adapt adapted. Exceptional parasite resistance compared to British sheep breed. In colder, se colder season, they produce very heavy winter coat. Next, um, Suffolk, Suffolk sheep from England mainly raised for meat production but are also good for wool production. They are quite famous because of Sean the sheep. Hindi siya kilala siya yung cartoon character na usually napapanood ko sa Disney Channel. Okay, next we will be discussing Mendelian crosses. It is one of the experiments of Gregor Mendel on inheritance. Gregor Mendel is the father of genetics. Okay, so si Gregor Mendel, pinag-aralan pinag niya yung um, pea plants. Okay, he discovered the fundamental laws of inheritance. Kung paano na iipamana nung karak yung karakteristik nung pea. Okay, so gumamit siya ng pea. Tinignan niya kung paano na iipasa yung violet flower sa white flower. Pinag-compare niya yun. Okay. So, meron tayong two types of crosses. Meron tayong mon... Ito yung sinasabi kong color ng pea kanina. So, meron tayong monohybrid, monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross. Pag sinabi nating monohybrid cross, ito yung pinakauna experiment ni Gregor Mendel. Bakit? Kasi ang, kapag sinabi nating monohybrid cross, isang trait lang yung titignan. So, dito, ang tinignan lang niya ng trait ay yung kulay ng flower. Okay, ayan siya. So, pinag-cross niya yung um, violet sa um, white flower. So, yung unang crossing, first generation, yung naging offspring ay pu puro violet. Pero, nung second generation na, nagkaroon na ng white. Okay? So, sa dihybrid crossing naman, ang ginawa, dahil nga si Gregor Mendel, hindi siya nasatisfy sa monohybrid crossing na yan. So, ginamit naman niya ulit or pinag-aralan naman niya yung dihybrid cross. So, dito sa dihybrid cross, marami na siyang trait na tinignan. Okay? Kasi diba dun sa una, ang tinignan lang niya yung kulay. So, merong purple and merong white flower. Okay? Pagkatapos nun, dinagdagan na niya. Tinignan niya na yung height ng plant. May tall, may short. Yung kulay ng seed. Yung shape ng seed. Yung kulay ng pod. Yung shape ng pod. And yung position ng flower. Okay? yun yung tinatawag nating dihybrid kasi two or more traits na yung tinitignan niya or pinagbabasihan. Okay? Meron naman tayong tinatawag na dominant and recessive. Kapag kasi sinabi nating dominant, dahil nga siya tinatawag na dominant, siya yung nasusunod. Ibig sabihin, kapag sinabi nating dominant, dahil siya yung nasusunod, pag pinag-cross mo tong purple sa white, ang lalabas din na kulay ay purple. Kagaya nga dito sa una niyang experiment na yan. Nung pinag-cross sila, dahil nga dominant itong purple, nung pinag-cross, yung unang offspring nila, puro purple lahat. Okay? Kapag kasi nabi naman natin yung recessive, ito yung mas madalang lumabas. Okay? Dahil nga recessive siya, sumusunod lang siya sa kulay ng dominant. Okay? So, meron naman tayong tinatawag na phenotypic or phenotype at meron din tayong genotypic or genotype. Kapag kasi sinabi nating genotype, ito yung mismong DNA. Kapag kasi sinabi naman nating phenotype, ito yung lumalabas na trait. Okay? So usually yung genotype kinakaraktarize natin siya sa mga letters. Okay? So kapag parehas na capital letters, siya ay dominant. Kapag parehas naman na small letter, siya naman ay recessive. Okay? So for example, ang genotype natin ay capital letter P. Ang lalabas na phenotype nun ay violet. Okay? So, yung kulay ng flower ulit yung pinagbabasihan natin. Pag parehas na capital P, ang lalabas na phenotype or karakteristik nun ay violet na kulay ng bulaklak. Okay? Naulit ko. Kapag genotype, ito yung mismong genes na kinakarakterize natin as letters. Kapag phenotype naman, ito yung lumalabas na traits na nakikita natin with our naked eye. Okay. Next, meron tayong tinatawag na homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. 
Okay? So, makikita natin yan dito sa genotype. Okay? So, dahil nga sinabi ko kanina, ang genotype ay kinakarakterize ng letters. Okay? Pag sinabi natin homozygous dominant, parehas na dominant yung letter. Okay? Kapag parehas na dominant, ibig sabihin parehas na capital letter. Kapag sinabi naman natin heterozygous, isang capital at isang, isang small letter. Kaya nga siya tinawag na hetero kasi magkaiba. Okay? Kapag sinabi naman natin homozygous recessive, Kapag homozygous recessive naman, dahil nga tinatawag na recessive, parehas na small letter. Okay, dito naman sa trait. Ang example natin dito ay yung coat color. So, meron tayong bird. Um, I'm not sure kung anong type ng bird. Okay. So, ang dominant color niya ay red. Ang recessive color niya ay blue. Okay. Kapag ka homozygous dominant, parehas na capital, ibig sabihin, ang lalabas na pinotype ng bird ay red. Bakit red? Kasi wala naman siyang kukuha na ng blue eh. Kung mapapansin nyo, parehas na capital letter, parehas na red. Okay? Kapag ka-heterozygous naman, dahil mix, isang capital at isang small, ang magiging kulay pa rin niya ay red. Bakit kaya? Dahil nga dominant yung red. Kapag ka-dominant, siya lagi ang nasusunod. Okay? Kapag ka-homozygous recessive naman, lalabas lang yung kulay na blue kapag ka-homozygous recessive. Bakit? Kasi walang dominant. Pero kapag ka itong isang letter na to ay capital letter, automatic siya ay magiging red dahil yun nga yung dominant. Okay, so susubukan natin gamitin yung um, Mendelian crosses. Okay, so magsimula muna tayo dito sa slide na to. Okay, so dito ang, ginamit, ang gagamitin natin ay yung regular crossing. Okay, so sa regular crossing, meron tayong male of course and meron tayong female. Kapag cross natin sila, okay, at malalaman natin kung ano ang offspring. Okay? So, by the way, gumamit tayo ng capital T para ma-distinguish yung dominant na characteristic, which is tall, at yung small letter T naman para sa short. Okay? Ang magiging offspring nila ay heterozygous dominant. Okay? So, for the genotypic ratio, ilalagay lang natin heterozygous dominant. Okay? At dahil nga heterozygous dominant, ang lalabas na phenotypic niya ay tall. Okay? Bakit tall? Kasi meron nga siyang kasamang dominant. Remember, kapag ang offspring nila, offspring nila ay parehas na capital T, yan ay tall. Okay? Kapag parehas naman na maliit na letter T, yan ay magiging short. Okay? Pero dahil ang offspring nila ay heterozygous, isang capital at isang small letter, ang magiging offspring pa rin nila ay tall. Why? Because yung tall nga ay dominant. Okay? So, siya lagi ang masusunod. Okay? So, ito yung tinatawag na regular crossing. Okay? Kapag kaginamit naman natin yung Punnett square method, magkakaroon lang tayo ng mga square na ganito. Ayan, di ba? Nakikita nyo yan. Okay. So, yung square na yan, sorry, dalawang letter T lang dapat yan. Okay. So, ibibring down mo lang to. Ayan. So, merong isa. At dito naman, isa din. Okay. So, ilalagay mo dito yung male, parehas na capital T, and yung female naman, parehas na small letter T. So, cross mo sila. Ang magiging offspring nila ngayon ay Ayan. Pare-parehas na heterozygous. So, paano natin ginawa yan? Ito, isusulat mo lang dito. Ito, isusulat mo lang din dyan. So, yan yung tinatawag nating Punnett square. Okay? So, parehas lang ito ng sagot dito at ito. Kasi parehas lang naman na parent. Pinapakita ko lang dito yung example ng regular crossing at ng Punnett square. So, same lang, genotypic ratio. So, dahil Punnett square yung gagamitin natin, malalagyan na natin siya ng number. Magiging ratio na siya. Bibilangin natin to So, meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 
4. So, lalagyan natin ng 4 heterozygous dominant. So, ang ilalagay nating phenotypic ratio ay 4 tall. Okay? Ibig sabihin, yung magiging offspring nila ay puro tall. Puro matatangkat. Okay. So, for our next example naman, we will be using naman yung offspring kanina. Iko-cross natin sila sa isa't isa. Okay? So, meron tayong parehas na heterozygous dominant. So, ito muna ulit sa regular crossing. Okay? So, pag cross natin yan, lalagyan natin ng ganyan. Okay. So, una. Itong unang letter muna tayo, iko-cross natin siya dito. Okay? So, magkakaroon tayo ng homozygous dominant. So, ito pa rin tayo sa first letter. Iko-cross naman natin siya doon sa pangalawa. Magkakaroon tayo ng heterozygous dominant. Okay? Pagkatapos nun, iko-cross naman natin yung second letter. Doon muna sa una ulit. So, magkakaroon tayo niyan. So, same process. Okay. So, magkakaroon tayo na magkakaroon tayo ng homozygous recessive. So, for the genotypic ratio, ilalagay lang natin 1 homozygous dominant 2 heterozygous dominant. Paano naging 2? Ayan, o, dalawa sila. And 1 hetero, I mean homozygous recessive. Okay. Ano naman ngayon ang kanyang magiging phenotypic ratio? Burahin muna natin yan dahil kulang na na space. Okay. So, ang magiging phenotypic ratio natin ay 3 tall. Tatlo sa magiging anak nila tall at dalawang, I mean, Sorry. Two tall and one short. Bakit kaya tatlong tall and one short? Kasi ito, ang pinotipik niyan ay tall, ito, tall, at ito lang ang short. Okay? Inuulit ko. Kapag ka heterozygous, laging masusunod yung capital letter, which is tall. Okay? So, ang, pinot ang genotypic ratio, 1 tall, 2 short, uh, I mean, 3 tall and 1 short. Okay? So, for the Punnett square naman, same offspring. So, ilalagay natin. I mean, same parent. Yan, ipag-cross natin sila. Ilalagay natin dito yung isa. Yan. Yan. Ito rin. Okay, so ang magiging offspring nila, di ba, yan and yan. Next ay yan and ito, capital and small letter. Next, capital and small letter. Parehas na small letter. Okay, di ba, so same lang siya. Ang magiging genotypic ratio, 1, homozygous dominant, ito yan, 2, heterozygous dominant, yan, 1, 2. And of course, 1, homozygous recessive. Okay? So, for the phenotypic ratio, 3, tall, and 1, short. Okay? So, pinag... Pinapakita ko lang, pare, since parehas ng parent, pinapakita ko lang dito yung process ng regular crossing and sa Punnett square. Okay? So, bakit ba kailangan pa natin gawi, gamitin yung Punnett square na yan? It is because kapag ka marami ng trait, may hirapan na tayo dito sa regular crossing. Remember na ang ginagawa pa lang natin ay monohybrid crossing. So, kapag ka umabot na tayo sa dihybrid crossing, nagagawin natin mamaya medyo mahihirapan na tayo dito sa regular crossing. So, dito naman tayo sa dihybrid cross. Okay? So, gagamit tayo ng dalawang karakteristik. Okay? Meron tayong black 
which is the dominant, and meron tayong red, which is the recessive. Yung second trait na gagamitin naman natin ay pulled, which is the dominant, and horn, with, which is recessive. So, gagamitin natin letter B and letter P to indicate dominance kapag ka-capital and small naman para sa recessive. Ito, recessive. Ito naman, dominant. Okay? So, paano natin, gamitin mo natin itong regular crossing? Okay? So, kagaya ng kanina, ito muna. Ayan. cross natin dyan. So, magkakaroon tayo ng capital and small. Okay? And itong letter P naman, cross natin doon. So, magkakaroon tayo ng ganyan. Okay? Ganyan ang magiging offspring. So, ang genotypic ratio natin ay heterozygous dominant. Okay? Ano ang magiging phenotypic ratio? Of course, black. Bakit black? Kasi dominant nga siya. Ayan, may dominance. Black and, lalagay natin and, I'm sorry for my handwriting, Black and pulled. Ibig sabihin, yung magiging offspring natin, dito sa crossing, merong black coat color at pulled. Ibig sabihin, walang sungay. Okay? So, for the Punnett square, cross natin yan. Okay? So, per square, hindi mo pwedeng pagsamahin yung same letter. So, ito muna. At saka ito. So, B. P. So, dahil same lang naman, ganun din. Okay. Take note. Sa isang square, hindi pwedeng magkasama yung same letter. Kaya dapat paghiwalayan. Okay? So, dito naman, yung first letter, small letter B and P, ganun din dito. Okay. So, ang, magi ang magiging offspring, mm -hmm. Ito yan, and ito. Okay. Ito naman yan. Dito naman. Okay. So, for the genotypic ratio, dahil nga Punnett square ang ginamit natin, pwede natin siyang lagyan ng number. 4, y4, 1, 2, 3. 3, 4. 4, heterozygous dominant. Ang offspring ay 4, sorry, 4 black and pole. Okay, so yan yung magiging offspring. Okay. So, next example naman. Okay? Yung offspring naman kanina. Okay? Di ba ang offspring kanina ay heterozygous dominant, which is black and pulled. Ipagkukross naman ngayon natin siya. Ayan. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, mas marami na yung square. Why? Kasi mas marami ng combination yung pwede nating ilagay. Di ba? Okay. So, dito sa taas, ito muna ng capital B and capital P. Okay. Next, capital B and ito, small letter P. Okay. Next letter, small letter B, capital P. Okay, sulat ko dito para hindi kayo malito ah. Mm -hmm. Next, ito. And ito. Okay. Next ay, uh, syempre ito naman. And ito. So, parehas na small letter. Okay. So, same lang dito. Okay. 
So, ayan na nga. Huwag kayong malilito ha. Inuulit ko, kagaya ng sabi ko kanina, sa isang box na ganito, kapag ka-parent, hindi pwedeng magkasama ang parehas na letter. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, sa isang box na yan, dito sa box na to, magkaiba ng trait. Hindi pwedeng pagsamahin mo yung dalawang letter B. Hindi pwede yun. Okay? Kasi magkakamali ka. Okay. So, for the crossing, palitan natin yung kulay. Okay. For the crossing, yung pinakauna, parehas na capital B, parehas din na capital P. Okay? So, dito naman tayo. Parehas na capital B, isang capital P, and a small letter P. Okay? Huwag kayo malilito. Isang capital B, small letter B, at parehas na capital P. Okay? Next, heterozygous. Dito naman tayo, parehas na capital and then heterozygous. Ayan, nasusundan ba ninyo? Um, kung, hin kung medyo nabilisan kayo dito sa topic natin, please feel free to message me anytime. Okay? Susubukan natin sagutin yung inyong mga tanong. Next. Ayan. So, tama ba? Okay. Mukhang tama naman. Okay. For the genotypic ratio. Okay. So, here are the answers. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be phenotypic ratio and this will be the genotypic ratio. Okay. So, for the checking, one homozygous dominant. Okay. Correct. Two mix. Okay, so this one and this one. Okay. Two let one, two. Okay, one. Okay, correct. Four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, correct. Two of this. This one and this one. One of this. This one, two of this, one, two, and finally one. Okay, so for the phenotypic ratio, we have nine black and pole. Okay, for the nine black and pole, paano tayo nagkaroon ng black and pole? Na nine, so bibilangin natin. So this one, definitely black and pole. This one is black and pole, so we have... Mm, three. Uh, this one is black and fold. Mm, and this one. One, two, three, four. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine. Come on. Three black and horn. Okay, so this one. Oh, wait, let's change the color. This black and horn, to black and horn, black and horn, and this one. Okay, so one, two, three. Tama. Next, three red and pulled. Three red and pulled. Ito uh, red and pulled. Red and bold, red and bold. Okay, so three tama. And finally, one red and horn. Ito. Homozygous recessive. Okay, so correct. Okay, so that would be all for the Laboratory Activity 7. If you have any other question, please feel free to message me anytime. 
And of course, please watch the other videos for further knowledge. Okay, thank you very much and I hope you will have a good day.